There's a campaign going on right now to get Americans to believe that so-called black people are more racist than so-called white people. This is my first installment. Example number one, Riley Cooper, thug, white privilege exposed. Race card recipient Riley Cooper went on a disgusting racist tirade at a Kenny Chesney concert, but as usual, people missed the bigger picture. He said, and I quote, I will jump that fence and fight every N-word in here, bro. Most people who commented on it heard only one part of what he said. As nasty as the quote N-word is, he said something much worse. He boasted that he'd fight every so-called N-word in the building. And in other words, a celebrity, a famous football player, threatened to commit a hate crime against a group of people that he demeaned and degraded by labeling them a terrible name with a horrific history behind it, and he got away with it. I saw not, one, not even one person on a message board, a talk show, etc. speak about how him threatening violence against innocent and random people was an issue at all. The real issue behind what he said was that he got away with committing two crimes that day. First, he threatens to assault people. And secondly, the threat was towards a, quote, group of people, and it was racially motivated, which makes it a hate crime. All he had to do to get himself out of it was apologize. You know, nobody felt there was any need for security to come get him out of there or for the law to intervene because an apology is, of course, more than enough. Right. Loads of Caucasian people have done this in the past 10 years. The Jedi mind trick of using a disgusting racial slur, possibly with a threat or other nasty comments along with it. Then they apologize and it's all good. They come out clean because psychologically it makes people think, rather feel that the person has quote grown as a person and sometimes is spun in their favor to make them appear to be the quote real victim. The victim of the existence of so-called black people. Morse. In reality, everyone knows that you're saying the N-word and a lot worse. Hell, Adam Carolla uh, alluded to him having thoughts of the genocide of so-called black people that, you know, it could be beneficial for society as a whole. I mean, how anti-Semitic is that of him to say such things? But I'll talk about that another time. But I will say this. You wonder why so many so-called black males feel that they have nothing to live for? Nothing to look forward to? They saw a celebrity threaten their safety, and it was completely ignored. Reduced to a mere word, then spun back around onto them. A lot of Caucasian people res resorted to childish victim blaming, defensively claiming that black people say it too. I'd love to see a case where a man gets to let go by the police after assaulting a woman because, quote, women hit men too. I mean, we're talking about the the two wrongs make a right crowd here the whole they say it too argument is nothing but a distraction it's a diversion from the real issue Trayvon Martin was called a thug for wearing a sweatshirt that had a hood on it while it was raining and he was also called a thug because when he was a teenager he took a picture with his middle fingers up and Riley Cooper can threaten groups of people Groups of innocent people, not just individuals who have wronged him, but rather take shots at random people. And everyone is too hypnotized to notice or too desensitized towards human beings that they don't even care. As a quote, black person listening to rap music, you get called a subscriber of quote unquote black thug culture. Yet white privilege has been ingrained into American souls so deep that even school shooters aren't accused of being part of, quote, European thug culture. Some of these risky youths slaughter people in the school system and then just go on to be called troubled people. And of course, nobody wants to play the, the statistics card game when it comes to that subject. These races have readily available to them in their memory 
all kinds of alleged statistics when a brown person comes up in a conversation. It's amazing how the benefactors of white privilege, better known as positive perception or being accepted at face value, can only see what they want to see. The real race card is the red card. The color of Riley Cooper's skin. He got away unscathed after threatening to bash people's skulls in because he was angry. A big, quote, white guy like him could have done some serious damage. And he seemed to not discriminate when it came to age or gender either. He's ready to use his mixed martial arts moves on men, women, children, hell, even babies and the elderly. If you didn't notice the fact that he threatened people, if you only noticed the usage of the N-word, you were either a racist yourself or a zombie under hypnosis. So wake up or get woke up.